This is in celebration. This is in praise. This is in defense of every woman. This is you thinking, and this is me talking. This is us supporting a woman generation. This is a woman thing. This is a girl thing. This is for the mothers, and this is for the grandmothers. This is for everyone who dares to be woman. Well, to tell you the truth, being a woman just ain't easy. All that stupidness about women balancing home and work and everything in between is out of balance because it don't have no equilibrium. Because you're always leaning to one side of life while your mind telling you to go in a direction that no woman has gone before. And on top of all of that, on top of figuring out your place and trying to run your race and fighting for your space, on top of all of that, woman giving you more trouble because you is a woman. You don't know what I mean? Maybe you don't realize. Two mother crab cannot occupy the same universe is why your colleagues at work don't really talk to you. But that's funny. And that don't make much sense because these women talking to every other mother crab in the same small universal space. So you think it must be something you do why they don't like you. And women, yes, women just like you will want to cut you down just because you like them trying to define your life. And they want to tell you how to dress. And why you don't look good today? Huh? And they think highly of themselves, I tell you, to think that their laughter and their opinions on your style and your hair and your shoes mean a thing. As if in the little universe you're trying to set up for yourself, they mean more than they're supposed to. So this is for all the girls who dare to be different, who step out in bright yellow like the blazing sun when all the world is in corporate blue. This is for all the girls who don't care about the status quo tough, and fling another dimension in the face of what it means to be a woman. This is for all the women who they say have too much style, the stockinged women and the made-up women and the women with the fake accents and the long nails who make the plain Janes feel less than a dollar, even though they themselves don't even have a cent. And this is for all the girls who stand, make the world stand at attention with the swing of their hips and the appeal of their glance. This is for those women who make other girls hold on tightly to their men, not because they want them or even try to get them, but because they shine too brightly not to be noticed by every single one of them. But this is for all the girls who are loyal to the sisters, who won't betray them with their men or diss them without reason. This is for all the girls who see men as colleagues, not just lovers, and who run shoulder to shoulder with the eagles and the tigers. But being a woman is sometimes a strange, strange thing. All that potential and sometimes no power because it has no unity in the cup. The only time you really have sisters is when you have a tragedy for all the world to see. They come like ants on a sugar hill to take a tasty morsel of the story to satisfy their hope that you ain't as good as people say you are. But the moment you back up again, the moment you begin to blaze, they stalk out, avert their eyes when they see you coming across the road instead of saying good morning, because they're comparing themselves to you and you coming out on top, and they can't handle that. And they're hoping and they're praying something will happen to make you lose your mind. And they're hoping and they're praying your man will leave you or your business will bust or you will be embarrassed. But they don't know, in the long journey of your life, them things done happen already is why and how is by the grace of God you're surviving today. They don't know if they can walk in your size 11 shoes, but they're jealous for them all the same. So this is for all the girls who make things happen, who aren't afraid to fall for the rush of the comeback. This is for the girls who know the pain of a vision, the grind of the challenge and the price of the fight. This is for all the girls who'd rather read than do dishes, who'd rather write and create than skin chicken and fry fishes. This is for the girls who run hot and sweaty with ideas and whose hair won't stay in place while they chase their ideals. This is for all the girls who share themselves with the world, every part of themselves except their very soul. This is for all the girls who redefine womanhood into something vast and encompassing all shades of their personhood. But to be a woman, you have to make a choice in your head first and then get your heart and your body to follow.
It's what you want that will make you decide how to move. It's what you want. The ring and the husband, the family, your degrees, your career, and international affair. It's either you make a choice to partner with your man or to run your whole show yourself and don't leave no place for this compromise stupidness. Where it fall, it fall. When he come, he come. And if he come, he come. And you don't care. But if you want different, you have to learn to play the game and toe the line. You have to choose which battles to fight and learn when to just sit tight. So it's either you're going to be a woman who could live with her man or a woman unto yourself. And when you make that choice, you have to stick with it and leave every other option for another life where it would have no God and no family and no society to remind you. So, this is for all the girls who straddle pretty skirts and loose pants, sexy heels and ballet flats, flowing tresses and quick one plaits, chic acrylics and laptop digits. This is for the girls who struggle with their choice, who want their husband in their bed and their degree above their head. This is for the girls who appreciate the men who make them feel loved and wanted, though they're strong and independent. But this is also for the other kinds of girls who go it alone, who chart their own course and buy their own home. This is for all the girls whose minds can be tamed by any man or woman who question every norm and break every tradition. You ever wondered what actors and actresses do when they have to get in shape really fast for a movie? Because I can promise you, it's not the same diet that you're following and the same training plan that you try. Why? Because what they do is take a catered approach. I get further and further in. By the time I hit the 90 days, I had lost right at 30 pounds. And my jeans were falling off of me. I have great results. Good night, good night, everyone. Welcome to another episode of Booyah. Tonight, uh, Peter D has been challenged to the extreme. I have no technical expertise on hand, and I know Lisa is laughing at me. No, oh, I'm not. I, it just, it's just unfortunate, Peter, because you know that you're always super prepared. So I'm sure anybody who knows you understands, honestly. Yeah, the struggle has been real tonight, guys. It's been absolutely real. And, and, and you know, it just, you know, my guy said to me, I'm so sorry, you know, but yeah. So we had our technical, he had to try and run in, try and sort stuff out for me. So yes, but I want to thank everybody for your patience. I want to thank you so much for joining us on Booyah tonight. Lisa, I want to welcome you. Not the kind of start out love, but sometimes these things do happen. Absolutely. But I do apologize to you for that. Um, I try to come here 5 30 try to make sure i get prepared and say you know what i'm gonna start just around quarter to seven and make sure everything is going good but of course sometimes things happen and we we you know we just cannot solve these but before i get into our discussion tonight lisa let me just um just take a moment just to 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 express my condolences to the Busky family i heard today that hildreth passed um at the hospital so I want to express my condolences to the family. Um, he, was a, he was a good journalist, if I remember him very, very well. Mm -hmm. So I express our condolences, you know, goes out to the family. You know, in these moments, we all have to be strong together and try to bind together as a community, as a society. Mm -hmm. I also want to say to individuals that um, we are in very difficult times. We have, we deal with COVID and it's no joke. You have people dying all the time. And some people say, oh, there's no COVID. But guys, if you believe there's no COVID, you know, I'm not even going to argue with you about it. But I just want you to respect others and just follow protocols. Wear a mask, keep washing your hands. Just do the things to keep the other people around you safe. Even if you don't believe there's COVID, after hence so many deaths. You know, we've heard so many people have passed the winds and Lucia over the last month or so, you know, it's, it's shocking, actually. So, and people that you know, people that are dear to you, you hear about them passing. So, again, condolences to all, all the families who have lost loved ones. 
I want to say good night to everyone. Joanne Pamphil, good night. Rochelle, good night. Gemma, Leona, Joseph, Jennifer, Zephyrin, Sabina, good night to you. Good night to everyone who's listening to us tonight, today. To, you know, I'm, I'm really, I feel really honored, Lisa, to be honest, to have you here with me. You know, um, before I give you the opportunity to, to, to introduce yourself and to say a little bit about you, you know, I just want to let everyone know that you're a St. Lucian. You moved to Canada, I think, about in 2013, thereabout. You moved to Canada, you uh, a wife, your business, you had a business before, you used to be in the media be more before, right? In St. Lucia yeah, television. Yeah. Right? You know what I mean? So, yes. So, you've done so much. You wear so many hats. And we're going to talk about that a little bit. We want to talk about your journey. We want to talk about your poems as well. You know, because, you know, um, the month of October, I think it's the 7th or so. I think it's, it's World po was World Poets Day, you know. So, you know, we want to we wanna show, showcase some of your work, which we did early on today. We just played that Thank poem, you. which is, my God, awesome, awesome. Thank you. You know, and I've listened to so much that you've done. It's incredible. It's really incredible. But before we go on and I start talking and bubbling on, I want to give you the opportunity to introduce yourself, to tell our audience who exactly is Lisa Dublin, this young lady from St. Lucia who moved to Canada in 2013. <laughs> I don't know about young. <laughs> I guess young is relative, right, Peter? <laughs> it but is relative I, because I feel, I feel young, young too, right? <laughs> <laughs> but thank you so much for, for just uh, hosting me on your show. And uh, um, I, I just before you, we came on, I was on my Facebook Live telling people all about you and how happy I was to be here. So we know that, you know, like the beginning, the introduction, how things happened was just an anomaly because you're just super prepared. And I, I maintain that. You just shown that. So thank you so much for inviting me. Um, I am St. Lucian to the bone. <laughs> Only moved here in 2013 to Edmonton, Alberta in Canada with my family. I've been married 17 years and uh, um, I, we have three sons. And uh, here I work at the university uh, full time. My passion, however, is communication and speaking and performing and writing. That that that's my these are my lanes so on my things on this side uh like i do right now i run a personal um you know like a video blog called basement chronicles it's all over social media <laughs> and it's also on youtube right and uh, so it's i started it in the pandemic like in in march i think or may 2020 and so we're up to like 54 episodes now just like three to five minutes trying to inspire people and to really speak about things from a personal development point of view. So it's one of the things I do. Um, if you're watching from the beginning, Peter played my poem to all the girls that um, it was actually written in 2012, 2011 or something for a Word Alive um, performance, which I won, a Word Alive poetry slam, which I won back home. I only put it together on video, however, last year for the Voices of the Underground project from the Cultural Development Foundation in St. Lucia. And what happened is I took the poem and we um, it was edited in St. Lucia. And then I just took out my piece and put it out there. And, you know, like next thing I know, it's like 15,000 views, which is not much, I guess, considering whatever. But for the little island girl, I, I didn't expect it and the numbers are growing. So, you know, I'm very grateful. I think it resonates with people a lot. So I am that kind of performance poet um, that deals with the power of the word and the power of message and speaking. So I do that, the performance poetry, and I think my signature course on a virtual course is one called Speak With Confidence. I'm on my third cohort, incidentally, where I teach professionals and entrepreneurs how to really leverage the power of speaking and communication to be able to influence, to be able to make more sales, to be able to get, um, you know, get credibility in their field, which you definitely need if you're a professional or an entrepreneur. You know, that's, you know, it's so hard to be a public speaker, you know, it's so hard to speak because so even me, me, yeah, I'm so nervous, you know, I'm, look at me, I'm shaking away. No you know? way! <laughs> <laughs> you're right. <laughs> it's, and, you know, so what you're doing is, is awesome. And, and I've listened to, to Basement Chronicles, I've listened to a few, and one of the, I, I, I particularly like, um, I think, what was it? It was, was it, I think it was 50 about to start. Mm -hmm. It was something to do with starting. 
you know, we, we, you know, st- trying to start because a lot of times we think about things we want to do, but we never really start. Mm-hmm. And I think that was one of the, the ones I, I, I really like that one as well. Thank you. Yeah, yeah I think, yeah. I think uh, it's confidence. It's just having that go-getter kind of attitude. It's also, you know what, if I want to do it, at some point, I need to be laser focused on that thing and put everything away for me to be able to do that thing. That is what I call getting unstuck <laughs> and starting. Uh, true, true. You, you, make, you take the first step because only after you take the first step can you take the second and the third and the fourth. Absolutely. So you need to take that first step. So I think what you're doing, to be honest, is, it's, it's awesome. You know, Thank I've you. listened to a few of, 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 of your Basement Chronicles. I think they, they're awesome. They, in, you know, they really help people who sometimes you, you reach someone, there's a stumbling block, but sometimes you listen to somebody and then you say, you know what? I can do this. I remember for me, you know, when I, I, I wondered if I can actually do this, you know, if I can actually be a host of a show, I wondered if I can. And sometimes unless you go deep within, you never find that you can do something unless you search deep within. And I encourage everyone to, to, to log on, to go on to Basement Chronicle and just listen to the things that you have to say, because I, I personally find them very, very inspiring. Thank you. So thank you for that and continue doing that work. Absolutely. Thank All you. Right. So let's, let's talk a little bit about, before we go into your poetry and your performance poetry and so on, let's talk a little bit about you as a person. All right. Let's talk a little bit about your life. So you're, you're a married lady. Yeah. How many children? <laughs> Why does that sound so old fashioned? <laughs> but I am. <laughs> I don't care. That's what it is. <laughs> <laughs> with uh, with uh, a house full of men, right? Young man. You're, you're <laughs> yeah. Yeah. There's that. There's that. So you wear the mother, the mother hat, the yeah. hat of the mother. Then, of course, you, you're the poet. And, of course, you, you work at, at the university in, in Alberta, Canada. Mm-hmm. Let's, let's talk a little bit about EDI. Okay. Equity. Sure. Diversity, diversity mm-hmm. at inclusive inclusion, right? Yeah, well, yeah, inclusion. So now they say inclusivity because inclusivity. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Right. So I know you were recently the chair of that organization, but you stepped away. Mm-hmm. Considering the, 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 the that, that platform, I think it's an important one. What influenced your decision mm-hmm. to move away from 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 that position? Yeah, so it, it's only a, f- a couple of days old as we discussed. And so I'm, I was formerly as of maybe last week, the chair of the Equity, Diversity and Inclusivity Committee of the Non-Academic Staff Association. So this is like at the university, the, the Non-Academic Staff Association, I was the chair of that EDI committee. Um, and it was a, EDI is such a big field. EDI is huge. And I had to, I'm so happy I got into it, honestly, Peter, because being a minority um, in, in a country like this, um, you are in New York. So it, you know, it's more or less the same thing. It's pretty important that you are aware of who you are in this space. And especially since I have sons only and a husband and brothers, I do have a sister. I, I have two brothers and one sister. And you know, many other people that I consider very close to me who matter. It was very important to me to lend my voice to the cause. What I've discovered, however, is that even within um, EDI, you have to be able to find your ground. Uh, EDI, when you talk of equity, when you talk of diversity, you're speaking of all the whole gamut of sexuality, gender, race, um, ageism, religion. It is very, very big. And you know, I looked at my life and what was most important and where I could most make a contribution. And it really is in the area of race relations and figuring out my place in terms of what God said and our place as a race. I'm I'm very much, I make no bones about it. I love everybody. However, I'm very much in love with being black. I am, I'm blessed to be black. I prefer to be, I, I know it's not politically correct to say it. I prefer to be black just because I'm just so much in love with who God made us to be. And so because of that, and just because of, I didn't think that I could make as much of a pointed contribution in the entire gamut of the field as I could looking at one specific area, 
I decided, okay, I've done two and a half years and uh, did quite a few things, lots of lunch and learns, you know, race sensitization at the university for the staff and all of that. But it was time for me to kind of move on to um, focusing a little deeper on one aspect of EDI, even while I continue to contribute to the effort at the university. So, yeah. Understood. Can you like expand just a little bit more on the aspect that you've decided to focus on? Or are you? Oh my gosh, you? you're such a good interviewer. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> I start from the point that God made me and God made everybody. And because of my faith, it's not very, it's not very politically correct to mix Christianity with your whole blackness. But for me, these two things are so important because I am both of these things. And for me, my starting point of, of thinking about race is starting from who God made me to be and to kind of push back against the lies about black people that have nothing to do with who God said we are. And I want to explore that further. I think it is the truest truth. I think it is the superlative way of being able to combat racism especially in these kinds of countries that we live in, when we look at it from a point of view of love, but a love based in understanding that, hey, we are equal, that you are equal to me, right? And your lies will not affect me. Yeah. I got you. You know, it, 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 it reminded me of one of your poems, to be honest, and I'm, I'm, I'm struggling here to remember the name because you know of, of old age, but I remember it's where you made the comparison of, of going to change an item and the guy didn't look at you. He didn't look at the fact that you're changing the item. He looked at the color of your skin. Yes. And, you know, and what, as a result of that was saying he couldn't help. I remember the juice of the poem. I don't remember the name of the poem now, but mm -hmm. I remember the juice of the poem. So, so you've, you've always been, it's kind of like your life, if, if, if that makes sense. So you've always been involved in the problem of racism, the problem of sexism and so on. Considering the fact that you've moved away from, or part of, rather move away from EDI as the chair, what other organizations are you currently affiliated with? So um, right now, um, I used to be affiliated on, on the board, the, what you call the Citizens Action Committee of the Edmonton Institute for Women, that is the, the prison for women. As well, at some point, I did that also for the Edmonton Institution, which is the one for the maximum security prison for men. There, there is a high rate of um, indigenous people and people of color in both of those institutions. And you know that it's also tied to what Christ said about if you do these to the least of them, you do them to me, right? That you need to take care of those underrepresented voiceless people. I'm big on voice. I'm, I'm big on letting your voice, especially as an immigrant be heard. Can I just give you a, a short story, um, Peter, that just, Please. Yeah, just happened only last night. My boys just um, had a, to a basketball tournament last night. They won today. Yay! <laughs> Congratulations, boys. <laughs> I, wasn't even there. I, was, I was here getting ready for this and all of that, right? And um, last night we were sitting, you know, the, the, the parents were sitting as spectators. Just so happened that the team that my boys' team was playing, um, they happened to be... No, no, let me not even go there. But it, there was a white coach for that team and my son's coach is black. And there's a mother on the stage where all the parents were heckling. She started heckling one of the young black sons, I call them, in my son's team, okay? So he, he said to her to keep quiet. So she, she, he said to her, shh, because it's a game with children. Why on earth are you getting on like you're in some... NBA team like you what what are you doing like you forget that you're with kids and when she's when she was pushing back on this little this kid this kid is 13 because my sons were uh, in the under 13 team then she starts to push back my son's black coach um turns to her and says you know keep quiet why coach on the other side I'm I kid you not I saw this so blatantly that I almost wanted to cry white coach on the other side, some pompous guy, and it has nothing to do with his race, I don't think. It's just, you know, some guys are just, all of us have this, just prideful, I call it. And he just calls out the black coach for speaking to this woman. And the referee just runs over, guess to who? Referee leaves the game and runs over, guess, he, go, he goes straight 
for the black coach and I saw it. And so white coach at that point keeps quiet, white, white woman who started it in the first place keeps quiet and lets the referee go in on the black coach. Wow. wow. And I'm sitting in the back of her and all every other parent is quiet, but I can't be quiet because I have voice and I teach voice and you need to speak up. And I was like, this is not fair and said it as loud as I could. And I'm not even sure if it had an effect except that she stopped heckling our sons. And I, you know that those kinds of things, I, I'm not even choking up about it anymore because you have to get past the emotion for you to be able to deal with it. But it, it seems to me that these are the kinds of situations that our people of color face every day that are not fair. It is very instinctive. He ran across the court. He went straight for the black coach because obviously he's black and he's the problem and that cannot be right. And so I, I, I stood up and I spoke. I was like, no, this is not right. You made the trouble. Like you are the one, sorry, I'm, I'm getting into so not nice. <laughs> but basically this is why I want to take a closer look I also speak to um, what you might call it. I speak to young black people here in Edmonton to remind them that they are not a problem that they, and they always cry when I do this. You are not a problem. You are not a nuisance. You are not an irritation. You are blessed and highly favored above only not beneath. You have nothing missing and nothing broken. Go and let's see what happens. You know, it's, it's, it's interesting you, you, you referenced this story because I was about to ask you, Considering the, in the fact that you're in a, a male-dominated household, if I may say, you have a husband and three sons, you know, I, with everything that's going on, with the biasness and the racism and everything else that's going on around, especially Black people, and with the week of George, George Floyd and how he, how he died and so on, and everything that you're hearing, I was kind of wondering, what is the discussion like in the Dublin household? Considering what the, the advocate that you are, you know, I'm just wondering what kind of, what's the conversation like? Um, I think it, that's a, I really appreciate your thoughtful questions, honestly. Like, I'm not just saying that because they really bring out a lot more than perhaps I hadn't even thought about. Peter, the, the starting point is love. I'm not teaching you to push back against racism. I'm teaching you to love yourself. And if I say to my, like, on a morning we go, when I drive them to school, we say our confessions. We say what, what God said you are, because if God made you, how dare any other made human being come and tell you who you are? So if you beef up on, on what you know God said about you, every single morning we're you know just steeping ourselves in who God said you are, because I recognize that it is the starting point for being able to combat all the negativity and being targeted and so on. That being said, my sons, I think, are at a point where they're like probing and asking questions and wanting to fit in whatever. So my first son is, oh, you're always on this black thing, whatever. So I'm just laying the groundwork. I am just loving up on our people, even in their eyes, um, so that when I see black people on television, I see black girls on TV, I'll be like, wow, Oh, she's beautiful because you know <laughs> okay <laughs> you kind of have to lay the groundwork right that and i i appre i approach it from love as opposed to teaching them just to push back because i believe it will see them through if they know who they really are wow lisa I, you know I, I i have to take a page from your book right <laughs> because i have a it's true i have a i have a son who's turning seven in the next two weeks two weeks end of October and um, or three weeks actually mm -hmm. and um, and I need to take a page from that book I, I mean I do teach him love and it's all about love but I, I really do love this answer um, I'm gonna give a big shout out to the individuals who've joined us but I wanted to something I want you to think about um, there's so many people and you know around around the world or even in your community or in the areas that are thinking of doing something to help people who are facing injustice people who are facing victimization, people who are being abused, people who are going through some kind of thing. I want you to kind of think, what advice would you give to someone who kind of wants to go into that area of trying to help individuals? Before you answer, just let me give a big shout out to everyone who has joined us. Mm -hmm. So I want to say good night to Abigail George. Abigail George, good night to you. Priska D, my sister, good evening to you. Beverly D, I see you on. Good evening. Jennifer Zephyrin, uh, thank you so much, my girls. Thank you so much for joining us. 
Um, I just want to thank everyone who has joined us tonight. I can see Karani on. Good night to you. Thank you for joining. Um, I want to thank everyone who has taken the time out today to join us. And I need to apologize as well for the problem we had in the start. But I think it's all rectified now and we're good to go. I think because of that, we'll probably go an extra 15 minutes beyond the time just to make sure because I have a lot I'd like to talk to you about, Lisa. So if that's OK with you, I hope you have nothing to do. <laughs> I have time for you, Peter. Peter, I have time for you. All right, thank you. Because I was saying between the time we have to finish and the you know what I mean. So just give me an additional fifteen minutes of your time. But it's all yours. Please share with us um, if you have the answer to you know yeah. the question that I ask you. Maybe a part answer, like what I tell myself and other people in the field of EDI, mm -hmm. um, is perhaps part of the reason that I run as well. Uh, this thing of racism. Um, is a marathon it is not a sprint it is not a sprint and because it's not a sprint settle in yourself on what piece of this big puzzle that you're going to try to solve for me i want to give our black sons and our black people voice that you speak up even as an immigrant speak up let your voice be heard being an immigrant in particular does not mean, or being a minority does not mean that it's a minority of voice. It probably just means that it's a focused kind of voice that might be able to amplify even more. That's all it means. I see too many of our people come and lose themselves in what people expect them to be and end up being bitter and end up not being able to make contributions and by the grace of God, I don't, I don't want that to happen. So if you're in this field and wanting to make a difference, I, I would say just settle in yourself that this is a long haul, a long run. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, Lisa, for that. Let's yeah. just say hi to to Frances Severin, the, the the Rob lady, the Rob specialist. She has joined us tonight. So I want to mm -hmm. say thank you for joining us. Um, oh, that's that's a fix your lady. A fix your lady. Yes, <laughs> she's here. She's in the house. Hey. She's always here. So thank you. Good night. Sheldon, I want to say good night to you. Sabina, good night, good night. I want to say good night to um, 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 Keith. Good night to you, me, me, Minus. Or I saw somebody that I have. Oh, that's my friend. Actually, I'm she was an EDI with, with me. What? Yeah, Minu, 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 Minu. Yeah, that's just her. Yeah. That's her thing name. But but she was an EDI on the EDI committee with me. So she's okay. yeah. All right. So good night to her. Yeah. Uh, good night to Rufina Gabriel, my cousin over in Miami. Good night to you guys. I just want to say, if I do not call your name, please forgive me. Maybe I've missed it, but we love you all the same. And we want to thank you for, for, for joining us on Buyo. Pam, good evening, and thank you for joining us. Um, Lisa, you, you are a dynamic performance speaker, um, poet. Speaker as well, but thank I'm thinking you. of speaking, but, but poet. You have so many poems, and I've heard, and, and you know, when I listen to you, and I, no exaggeration, I listen to you in awe, because I'm, I'm just sitting there, and I'm listening, and I'm like, wow, because I'm playing the YouTube videos and listening, and I, I you know, listen, oh my God, there's so many of them, and, and I like, I, I was listening to um, um, MIA, and I don't know, why is it MIA 1? Are you doing an MIA Yeah, that's MIA? what, great, you see what I, you know, you're really good, though, no, you're, you're really good, like, it, it, it's a, uh, it's microaggressions. I don't even know. I just put MIA. It sounded it sounded James Bondish. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and I really meant it to be like MIA for microaggressions. So I was like, okay, that sounds I love James Bond. So I was like, MIA, that kind of sounded James Bondish. And the, the point is I I would love to continue to address microaggressions because it's a big field of EDI that those microaggressions, um, those things that are targeted not against a mass, against an entire race or people or gender, but against indiv individual negativities, it, the things that happen one-on-one -on -one in the workplace, in the store, as I did in my, my poem, um, MIA1. So I want to be able to address them, not just with anger, but with insight to say like, hey, like, what are you doing? Can you do better? To kind of hold up a mirror and say, like this, this can't be right. And this is probably how it should be because if we were to exchange um, shoes, would you, would you absolutely do that? And the answer is no. Yeah. You wouldn't, you wouldn't. Exactly. So, so, so I, what I would like you to do is give us a, a glimpse of your work and tell me 
out of the so many poems you've done or so many you've written, which is one of the favorites that you have? And if you want to share one of them with us. Okay, no problem. So I have a new one that I'll be recording. Peter, remember I told you I was going to record it in time. And I'm, <laughs> and I'm waiting. <laughs> I'm doing it this week. I just couldn't get studio yeah. space in time. Not so good. I have this new poem called What Will We Do When We Come Out Again? But I think um, one of my favorite poems is To All the Girls because I, I, I realized, I felt it so deeply and it, the, the feeling comes out every time I listen to it, I realized what I was feeling. And I think that's why it resonates so deeply with all sorts of women in particular, because you, it, it's just what we live. And you know, the thing, as I always say, when I, when I talk about that poem is, we're not just the victims in the poem. We're also the women who are given grief and give and throw in shade, okay? All right, yeah, you, you did. You covered it, you hit it all. You hit, and you know what I wondered, right? While I was listening to that, I, I want to give you a chance to share your book, but you know what I was, I was wondering? I said, I wonder, could Lisa write a story to all the men or a poem to all the men? What would it be? How would it sound? You know what I mean? I, I, I just, you know, my mind sometimes just stray a bit and I'm like, I wonder what it would sound like, but maybe just some food for thought, right? Yeah, food for thought, <laughs> food for thought. I do have, um, I do write um, like really love poetry for my husband oh you do yeah, yeah i do because you know that is that is the other that's the tenderest part of me that is a tenderest part of me i, I don't um yeah that's yeah <laughs> <laughs> so i do and i i always you know want to be able to at some point be able to write or to share very romantic bordering on sexual poetry because it's a part of our lives yeah. And I, because of just how I've, I've grown up, I, no shame where that is concerned, celebrate sexuality, celebrate, you know, God, God given gift in a lovely way. So, but not yet though, <laughs> one step at a time. So <laughs> to all the girls, perhaps is one of my favorite ones because I felt it so deeply. Yeah. Okay. But since we've listened to that one, mm -hmm. so like yes. share, I don't mind you sharing another one. You said you're going to nope. share the one that you were supposed to record or you're going to record this week? Yes, this let week? me share it. So this one is called, What Will We Do When okay. We Come Out Again? And it's so... In its entirety, right? Not part of... Yeah, I have it. So Peter, if you think it's too long, by all means, stop me. And this is your no, show. No, 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 it's not going to be too long because I'll be sitting <laughs> back and enjoying it, okay? And no problem. Everybody just will be enjoying it. Okay, thank you. So this is for everyone and especially for, I now live in Edmonton, Alberta. It's a beautiful place to live. And so I've kind of, you know, like um, some of the areas, the places are, are local to Edmonton, but the poem says, can we be different when we come out again? So here goes, please enjoy or whatever. Let me know what you think. After the shoulder soaked hugs of the grandparents who survived, after the amazement of a Saturday night stroll on White Ave is followed by the hysteria of a jam packed whim on a Sunday afternoon, after your acquaintance sprinkles a spit of blessing on your face like it was before 2020 at Browers, after getting squelched in the sweaty armpits of friends you haven't needed to avoid for two years, after the heady largesse of tipping waiters up and down the ice district high on the fly that we can dine again inside, after that pinch of reality, sitting with a friend on a bench in a park, close and okay, after all these nice and easy things, what will we do when we come out again? Will we allow the fracking of our foundations with new traditions of love? Because for a time, the inflection point was the exposure of a live wire of truth, the likes of which we had not seen before that triad of disruption, Donald Trump, COVID-19 and George Floyd. Will we face each other this time with a humble understanding, remembering that we shared the shame of hatred, that together we replayed the fruit of inhumanity at its brazen worst? Because if that knee on that neck is happening in the open, we can just imagine what happens in the prisons and on secluded country roads and in back alley encounters and in boardroom covens and in colorblind medical decisions and in biased classrooms. Yes, everywhere there is inequality and pride, voicelessness and easy lies that pass for the official version of truth. What will we do when we face each other again? 
Will you remember that you cringe in retrospect at the hate you gave, the hate with which you laced the workplace, the unfair stereotypes of the outsider, the nitpicking of the foreigner manager, stemming from your irritation at his presence, rising from your subconscious outrage that she didn't need you to be validated. Does this burn? Did we learn or was this vicarious regret for nothing? This cause is urgent, divergent, transcendent, but is it enough? Will we bear witness to the new spirit of this age where multiracial people join together to topple the white hot rage against change, cut the umbilical cord of privilege, take up the arms of contrition and cancel the culture of hate, no matter its decorated perpetrators? We were made for such a time as this, not later. We were made for a time called now, not future. We recognize that to birth a more feeling society, we work from the inside out, even while in a sense we cleanse the exterior. We recognize that while we enact laws to corral hate and try to cordon off prejudice with appropriate policy, our public contrition must not be diluted, that some corpses will pass out with the sullied bathwater of history. That by keeping statues and continuing to honor these names, we argue that racist tendencies should be frozen in old context, not realizing that this melting is inevitable for this new age. Those who cry cancel culture are afraid that we will cancel everything, that nothing will remain, admitting inadvertently that our past has been wholly racist and is therefore primed for a new beginning. What will we do when we face each other again? Will we step out into the new darkness of a love we've never given before on a scale never needed before, recognizing that to love each other like we love ourselves is to admit that we are equal? Will we remember to be different when we come out again. Thank you. I can't wait for the recording. That was absolutely amazing. Thank you. Wow. So much talent. <laughs> talented. Oh. Woman. It's amazing. You know, you know, Lisa, honestly, man, you are so talented. And and I can see it's it's emotional as well. There's a lot of emotion involved in there, so I can I can see that. So let me let me just give a big shout out to the individuals who are here. <laughs> yeah, a lot of individuals are, are commenting. So let me just say, um, Jennifer said super. Wow, re really had me on, yeah silent. I was hold on. I I, I want to get this because this is important. It is important. It is important because you know. Wow, really had me on silent and relaxing mood. Uh, <laughs> and you know, he says, love it, love it, love it. The lovely, lovely, lovely. Cora and my wife was all chairs clapping. Oh, my God. Abigail said, amazing. Pamela said, wow, beautiful. Uh, Jennifer again said, amazing. Sabina Daniel said, amazing, Aww, amazing, nice amazing, to be here. amazing. <laughs> you know, um, and everyone is just like, wow. And, and, and I'm in here and, and I'm like, wow. I mean, I know the young lady is good. <laughs> no, she's really, really good. But well, not to listen, <laughs> it, you know, the thing I think I think to me, what 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 brings out, you know, really you is you performing this live. It's not a recording. So they're not stopping you and saying, let's fix this. Let's do this. You actually just did this on watch radio on the Booyah show live wow and it was absolutely amazing Thank it was you. breathtaking breathtaking you know um earlier i was saying to you mary said oh my god well put together i love oh. it Thank you. I've been working on it a while. Peter, I realize I, I, I don't think I can do more than one major poem a year just with my schedule. Right. So I kind of just settled in myself. Okay, if I can do one thing, like one good one a year kind of thing, you know, but it's a little uneven still, still working on it. And um, yeah, but thank you. Thank you to your guests as well for the, the well, love. <laughs> well, one, thing, one, one thing about you, you're a very busy lady. I am, but I don't know. I do not know how you get the time to do the things you do, but yeah. you're very, very busy. You know, um, just before you 
um, we were talking about, I was thinking, I was, I was like kind of thinking, I said, I wonder what it would sound like if you did a poem for all the men, right? Yeah. And then <laughs> Jennifer Zephyrin said, and, and I didn't even see she wrote that, and she said, I wonder what it would be like if she did one for all the men as well. <laughs> so I was like, okay. <laughs> and what for all you see, you see, that's that's somebody validating my point and saying, it's, you know what, Liz, you need to do one for all the men. And I'm waiting. I, and I want to be the first to hear this, right? Oh, no problem. I want to be the first to hear this when you actually do this, okay? No problem. I'll come back and watch radio and debut. Like, I, I just debuted this poem, by the way, on Watch Radio. I on just, Watch Radio, right? Watch yeah, Radio. I just did. <laughs> and watching it, you know? Yeah, for sure. <laughs> Thank you for so sure. much. Um, Let's talk a little bit about, you know, you and your talent at what stage in your life did you realize you wanted to go into the arts you wanted to be a poet you wanted to share the ideas that you had flowing in your head or you know and who motivated you to really take that position and say you know what I'm, i can do this and i'm doing this mm. and, and, and then i want to ask the, the other part of that question is um who and maybe it's a really i don't know if i should but i will anyway go ahead <laughs> if i can't answer just <laughs> who, who is your favorite poet um i have a few for different reasons i love obviously i love Derek walcott just because that man is able to carry a an, a metaphor that man is able to take a metaphor and make an entire fishnet out of it, a whole country out of it. Like, I love that part. I love his, his poetry for that. There's another poet that I love, William Carlos Williams. And you won't believe why I like him so much. Apart from the immediacy of his poem, um, he was also a physician full time. So it tells me that you are able to combine things to make sense. Like he was a physician that was his his um, like day job. And he also had the vocation of poetry and he did it well. So I guess because his life mirrors mine and the poetry is well received and still quoted, I love him for that. And the other poet that I love is Galway Kinnell. This man wrote a poem called After Making Love We Hear Footsteps. And this man, he's dead now, right? From, I think he's from the United Kingdom. I forgot which one of, which one of the countries. But his poetry is about living married, making love, having kids, family, all of those elemental foundational things which represent where I am now, only that he's male, I'm female. So I love, you know, I love that thing. And of course, um, I have to also shout out Paul Keynes Douglas, because that spoken word has, it, it inf I should say, infected my poetry without me even, even realizing it. When I go back to all the girls, I hear Paul Keynes Douglas, and it, it, it's almost laughable because I go in and out unconsciously of the, like that's a whole hot mess, I think, but it kind of works because people like it, whatever, but he had that effect on me, and I guess on many Caribbean poets of hearing him on radio and him being featured so much when we were growing up that it became a part of your consciousness, right, so these are some of the people that I love, and to answer, that was your second question, the first one was, um, when did I realize, you know, like everybody else, when you have a talent, Peter, you just can't help but do it from very young. You know, they talk about Beyonce with the hairbrush from early Janet Jackson, Michael, ja Michael Jackson. From very early, I was reading and um, writing a lot um, when I was in, was it stage three? I don't want to misrepresent myself. Stage three or standard one, I wrote my first novel and they tried to get it published with Macmillan. It was called The Family. <laughs> And I got my first rejection slip because Mac Millen did not publish my novel. Yeah, but I've always loved English and um, always loved words. And so from very early, my mom was a teacher at the RC Boys School. Um, my dad worked at Cable and Wireless. So there was always, we were always in books and that kind of thing. So my mother always pushed me, made ways for me. And I always had lovely teachers for English all throughout my years. And so it just progressed from, I guess, from performance to performance. It, I won Teen Talent in St. Lucia in 1992, I think it was. And then, you know, just realized, hey, I love the stage. I love performing. That's what it is. The, doing the media, doing um, Sunrise on HGS Live with the cameras. And it wasn't just, oh, look at me. 
it was really the performance element of it, the, the, the lights and let's go, it's time to go live. I love those things, you know? So I guess I've just discovered myself by dabbling in different things as I go along. Awesome. You know, and you, you made a point, you say people might, people like, I think they love your work. <gasps> thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, and and the, sentiment, the sentiment here, you know, look, look, Francis Rob just said, Francis Rob said, love for you. Aww. And Jennifer Deferin said, always admire you, Lisa. Oh, wow. Thank you. Thank you. So thank you guys for sharing. Thank you so much for sharing. Lisa, I want to talk about another hat that you wear because you wear so many. And, you know, we don't have enough time to go for all the hats that you wear. Right? You know, there are quite a lot, you know, and I'm sure, and I'm sure your husband... I think his name is Hillary, right? Yeah, yeah. You know yeah. all my fans because every uh, uh, <laughs> I'm sure, I'm sure he'll agree you wear so many hats and you do them so and you wear them so well. Yeah. Let's talk, let's talk a little bit about motivational speaking. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm a guy who's shy. I can't real talk. I'm Are you? to open my mouth, yes. When people always think, you know, I, I, I always say this to people. I say, it's out of my shyness I'm able to speak. Because okay. they come and they say, but but if you go on a, on a podium, you can open your mouth and speak, right? And I say, yeah, that's because I'm afraid. So the automatic thing is to open my mouth and speak. <laughs> and what? I'm like, yeah, because of fear, I open my mouth and I speak. So when I start to speak, mm-hmm. I get composed because now I start to speak. So I'm, oh I'm you know, so that's what, that's why I think I'm okay. But people say, but you can do this, you know. And before you call me, I'm, I'm shaking and I'm like, and then I step on the stage and I'm like, yes, okay, Peter is here now. Well, so, I hope my listen, <laughs> Peter. I hope my my speak with confidence students are hearing that because I always say like the only way to get over to learn to public speak is to public speak, True. and that's what you're just proving there. You get on, you do it, and then you know. You know, I always say to people when you start, maybe the first couple words you shake, you you like, but once you get into it, you're into it, right? Mm-hmm. It's, exactly. just flowing. it's just flowing at this point. <laughs> So, so, so tell us a little bit because, okay, you're a motivational speaker. You, you started Bashment Chronicle in 20, 2020, 2019? 2020, yeah, Basement Chronicle. Yeah, for sure. Mm-hmm. What made you kind of move in that direction to start it? And, you know, sometimes, you know, we like to wait, we like to wait for all the, the bells and everything lovely and to start everything and everything looking so good. But you just started it. You're just like, you know what? I'll just start it. You didn't yeah. even start, you didn't even start, you didn't even share it on your main page or whatever. You just started it. Yeah. And afterwards, then I I I tried to dial back. I was like, oh my gosh, poor juice. As we say to the poor juice. Suppose. No, by that time it was too late. I, but the thing is, I, I don't think I ever think of what will people think. I've always started from the inside out. So a lot of things I don't do because I'm not feeling it. But the things that I do do, it's like if I feel it, I will do it. You know, and let it, you know, I mean, if God loves me, basically, um, that's the highest kind of love. So everybody else kind of takes your place <laughs> in the love line, right? But right. I started, this is why I started Basement Chronicles. It was March 2020. I went home from my job at the university. I started working from home on March 15, I think it was. And just before that, the year before that, I had gone through this whole um physical transformation as well so i want to start there um maybe i did it in st lucia i did motivational speaking um and my company still running i did quite a bit of it doing workshops uh, all sorts of things when i got here and having experienced significant loss in st lucia um i think my spirits were, were a bit dampened i i didn't feel as powerful or successful or anything of the sort and you know when you you know peter like us being immigrants when you're first starting off it is difficult it is difficult and i I came up with two sons and soon got a third kid whatever like yeah so it was difficult just setting up and we had no like very very close family to kind of help us along so those couple few years were spent um, minding the kids, getting my MA at the University of Alberta. I got a second master's there and there wasn't that much time. And I I took on a second job. I wanted to work at this gym. I, I love the uniform. That's part of it. And they were giving a free membership for gym. I was like, you know what? No, let's, let's start working at Good Life for other reasons too, obviously. And um, I they were offering like a free personal training session very quickly. Um, and I took that and I just happened to meet the right trainer and I started to lose the weight. 
And then my friend Arletta taught me, I always say that she taught me how to eat properly. It, what, what happened is I then began to build like a regular schedule of exercise and diet that spilled over, it made me realize I could lose weight. I moved from like 183. When COVID shut down, I had gone down to like 151 or something. Don't ask me how much I am now. Like, like <laughs> I put it a little more, <laughs> you know, like one, I'm up a little bit. I think I'm up like 165, no, 170. I'm at 170 and trying to go down again. However, there was a confidence that's, that sprung from being able to crush that physical goal. And I began to just regain my confidence in everything. And that was in inspiring people once again. It just so happened that many things came together at the same time. I no longer had to commute to work. And just before COVID shut down, Hillary and I had tried to get a, a studio for us to start doing the inspirational videos. And they shut us down. So, you know, when life gives you lemons, when I, what do you say? When life gives you lemon, you make your own lemon, brand of lemonade. 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 Well, hello, you know? So, so when they did lemon, that, lemon, that one, you know, they bumped us out because I think he had another client that he wanted to take. And I never forget this thing of that because we came from a place where we had our own. And we were like, okay, what can we do in the basement? So it took another look at the basement, like, hey, this is where I'll probably be living and working. And we set it up. Hillary is, I met Hillary working at HTS. He worked there for the longest while. So he's a tech guy. He's a studio guy. He, he was the one putting me on camera. He's still putting me on camera. <laughs> yeah. So we got um, the lights, the, the basic setup. And because I was in my basement and I'm a person, thank God, I have the gift of words. Praise the Lord. <laughs> so Basement Chronicles came about. And I started doing the three minute um, video blog and I, I haven't stopped. And the reason I haven't stopped is because I still have things to say. Like it just springs up from whatever I'm experiencing or seeing around me. Um, I've always been that analytical person. And so I applied to the video, which I love so much. But so that's what started. But did I answer your question? <laughs> you, no, you did. You did more than that. Right? Okay. But, no, but seriously, it's, it's really, Basement Chronicle is really, and if, People, no, for my audience here, if you've not seen it, I'm asking oh, you to go in and see it. Seriously, Thank I you. really do feel it's inspirational. I really do feel that people need to hear it because the things that you talk about are the things that affect people, the things that people need to hear, if that makes sense. Yeah. And and so, so, mm -hmm. Sorry. So you make, so I think it's, it makes sense that everybody should just log in, go and see it, listen to it. Yeah. You know, Sabina just said, you're a phenomenal woman. Aww. I know Beautiful. Sabina. Hi, Sabina. <laughs> yeah, and it's on it's on YouTube. The channel is called Basement Chronicles, so I'd appreciate them subscribing, and they would get notifications when I upload new videos. Yeah. You know what? I'm I'm guilty. I listen to, but I'm not subscribed. To. Yeah. So, so hit listen, that subscribe I, button. I need to hit that subscribe button because I do listen. I need to hit right. that subscribe button. And you know, I want to say this, right? You taking up the the job, the part time job at the gym. Is, is this showing off? Look at you when you when you you send that photo for the for the flowers. Like, oh, look at Lisa! Whoa, tone hand, the arms are like oh, like woo boy, you know. So, so oh congrats, God. man! Congrats. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Hillary took that photo in the basement. Really? <laughs> yes. So Hillary's a photographer as well. Yeah, he takes, <laughs> and I always say like you can. I don't know. There's something. Maybe we're going off topic a little bit. But to me, what you can tell when somebody has a connection with somebody who takes a photo. I don't know if you've ever experienced that. Like it's always been that way that you can tell the photo was taken by somebody who knows the person well. He's always been that way with me. So I mean, yeah, <laughs> I love that too. <laughs> <laughs> so he's great. Yes. Yeah. Tell, tell us. Tell us a little bit about speaking with confidence i think that's an initiative that you started recently mm -hmm. yeah confidence where you kind of like help young people young adults and so and so professionals and yeah. professionals as well so i think i need some coaching oh peter okay <laughs> nope i don't think you do. i think you're doing a phenomenal job honestly and on it like you're very probing i love that uh but my program speak with confidence is just what it is um it's as you can see i've been talking about voice all evening 
it's about voice or voicelessness. If you have voice and you have the confidence to speak up, there are so many other doors open for you. It is even more important to me now being an immigrant in this space where many immigrants are voiceless for many reasons. And it's not just because there's, oh, as we say in our society, fight down. Sometimes it stems from not having the confidence to speak up when you know you can make a difference and change somebody's life. And so um, stemming from Basement Chronicles, everything is development. And I just thank God for like, honestly, they say like God is like when you plant it by a river of, of living water, it, it, it just springs from one thing to the next. I don't know how else to explain a relationship with God that keeps on giving. But to me, it's like moving from one um, aspect to another to another, right? And so I started Basement Chronicles. It's going well. And I was like, okay, what else can I do? This virtual environment, you guys, it is prime for anybody who's a content creator. People like you, Peter, who are in the field, who can create things from where you are to the world. It's wide open for people like us. And so I was like, if this is a virtual world, and I always tell my students that the virtual world is borderless. It's not because I live in Canada that Canada has to be my, my, my playground. The world is now open to us if we know how to utilize it. And so this program really go, takes people through six pillars of being able to speak with confidence, starting from why are you speaking? Are you just there like, look at me? Or do you have a message? And if you have a message in any field to inform, to entertain, to inspire, or to persuade, let me show you how to leverage what you know to either make money for you, to gain credibility in your field, to gain influence, to gain followers and publicity, anything that you need with your voice and authentic voice, you can absolutely get it. And so I take people through a six week cycle where we um, do certain things. I teach one of the days and one day it's pure speaking. I think some of the secret sources of my program have to do with the a lot of feedback, one-on-one um, -on -one coaching and tons of practice because I, I maintain that how can you have a public speaking program and people don't get to public speak and people don't get to test it out. So there's lots of that going on by the end of the session of the six weeks, you are more comfortable. What, what I found too, Peter, last thing, is that the confidence spills over into other parts of their lives. Uh -huh. And it's amazing to watch. I cry all the time to see that confidence that it, I'm not even sure how it works, but confidence in one area results in confidence in others. And so I've finished my cohorts for this year and I start again with the adults for February and May. And I'm starting with the kids. That's my dream. I'm starting with the kids on November 7th. So it's just small cohorts. If anybody's interested in having the kids in the program, just hit me up and I can send more details. I was just about to say, how do we hit you up? And I know I could reach you on, have a number on WhatsApp. <laughs> you know, so do they have to like, Give a, I don't know if you have a, an email address you want to give to. Anybody. I do. Yeah. So my email address is lisa at lisamdublin.com, but that's not very, a very good way. I'm also on IG um, at Lisa M. Dublin. Also here on Facebook, it's the same social handle, either Lisa M. Dublin or Lisa Dublin. And, um, you know, I'd be very interested in helping your kids to be able to speak with confidence, especially the immigrant children who sometimes feel they are laughed at, they are you know, looked on as other, I let me help your kids be validated and know that God made them. You have nothing missing, nothing broken. Let me release that voice to go out and change the world. Yeah. And, and Lisa, what age are you looking at? Um, okay. Starting, yeah, starting. no problem. We have different ages. So I started the seven year old, seven to nine. Then we do 10 to 12. Then I also do 12 to 14 because as my, my board of advisors explained to me, um, there are some people on the cusp of 12 and some people um, at the at the end of 12 and you kind of need to cater to their needs. So we do the 12 to 14. And lastly, I do the 15 to 7, 15 to 18 group, I think, the last group. And so we're going to be just be taking them one hour a week with tons of practice for the six week duration starting November 7th, I think it is. Let me see. I think it's November. Yeah, November 7th, Sunday, November 7th. Oh, wow. Yeah. So. I tell you, this is a, bu a busy, busy lady. Well, Lisa, busy, I but happy. 
like, you know, anything else, all good things must come to an end. But before we end, um, I wanted to speak a little bit about the women conference that you normally have. Every yeah. October. I think this year, is it the 31st of October as well this year? It is. The it was, 31st. was it the 31st last year as well? It was the 31st last year. Okay. So the 31st of October happens to be my birthday, but that's not the reason I'm doing Happy it. Happy <laughs> birthday in advance. <laughs> Thank you. It just so happened. It just made sense. Like October is really, I think the I, I think I'm on a, an October girl, right? I, for many reasons. I just did my photo shooting. It's always in the fall. I just, I just love that time. So this conference, it's a virtual conference to all the girls virtual conference. I started last year and it's, it plants seeds in, it plants seeds of change in, in the ladies who attend. And this year it's a bit bigger. It's still virtual. Although next year, Peter, next year, you think you want to come to St. Lucia for the conference next year? Cause we're going to St. Lucia next year for the conference. Yeah, I heard, right? Mm-hmm. Dead set on doing it. I might just take a trip to San Lucia in October <laughs> next year. Boy, we'll right? invite our men along. We'll invite our <laughs> men know, along. I, I, I was wondering, you know, is it only for ladies or you invite the, the guys while you're having your conference, the guys go, and, go to the beach and stuff? Is that what we, happens? We should have to all the men or to all <laughs> the boys. <laughs> or to all the boys, right? <laughs> <laughs> Why does that not sound as good as to all the girls? To all the boys sounds really good to me. To that's all it? the boys, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> But it's going to be on the 31st this time, um, on the 31st of October, and we're going to look at five areas. If you can, as a woman, address those five areas in your life, your faith, your family and relationships, your health, your finances. Oh, no, sorry, six. What am I saying? Finances, then your purpose. A lot of women get lost there. Why are you here? Are you just here as a, I'm not saying that being a mom and being a partner is not all everything. However, do you have anything else that you know is God-given, that is your destiny, that you, you just stuck on? Come and get unstuck, right? And lastly, Peter, the last one is leisure. Now, people think I'm busy. Hannah, I sleep a lot, you know? I get my sleep in. So I, get, I go to bed really early because I wake up very early, but I do get my sleep in and take my rest. So I don't scrimp on that because I just can't afford to. But I know that there are many women who are burning the candles at both ends. Or we don't even have a designated hobby or something where we put our feet up. No, let's learn ways to relax, even with maybe limited resources or, you know, not having a lot of time. There are things that we can do for self-care and for leisure as well. So that's what the conference will be. And unfortunately, I wanted to be able to debut like the website page tonight, Peter, but it's honestly not ready. I, I will not lie to your audience, but I'm going to work on it in a bit and it will be up and I'll put the ads out on Facebook. So um, I'll send the link for you. And, and send me a link. Yeah, let me, I'll, I'll, I'll put it on, on watch radio and Thank on you. page as well. But let me, uh, so I was about to ask you how could people register, but I'm assuming once they get the link, then you could. Oh yeah, the link straight to, to registration. Yeah, for sure. Okay. Yeah. Um, you know, like I say, all good things must come to an end. Zoom will cut me off in a minute because I'm I'm just I I put I think I said to end at eight thirty. Okay, no problem. So, but I wanna, Lisa, I I, I wanna give you before before I say good night to everyone, before I say thank you everyone for being here, I want to give you like thirty seconds to share anything that you would like to share with our audience. Mm -hmm. You are blessed and highly favored above only and not beneath the head and not the tail. You have nothing missing and nothing broken. Let that sit with you. I didn't say it. Your heavenly father said it. It's supposed to mean something because he's the superlative in your life. Amen. So well said and so beautifully said as well. I tell you, when you when you have the skill, you have the skill. I would say this and it would not sound half You're as right. good as the way you said it. So yes. let me tell you, kudos to you. You know, we want to thank everyone who's joined us on Facebook tonight. Mm -hmm. You know, guys, we really appreciate the fact that you've been here. I know we have gone be beyond the time. That's because I messed up on the time. So we, we took the extra uh, uh, half an hour that we, we started late. You know, so, but I just want to thank everybody who has joined us. Thank you so much. Next week, guys, I want you guys to be in tune with, with the show next week because October is Breast Cancer Awareness Month. And, and, and next week, we're going to talk about breast cancer. I have three guests next week. We're going to talk with a uh, professional Dr. Gabriel is going to be on. We also have Dorothy, um, who is also the founder of Faces of Cancer. Mm -hmm. And she's also a cancer survivor. And we have, um, um, we have Sharon Callender as well, who's going to be on. 
So these are three, two people who have experienced cancer, who's gone through their survivors. And of course, we have a professional who talked to us about cancer, but also the individual will also share their experiences because they've dealt with it. So I ask everybody to join us next week. Um, it's going to be a, a, a bouillon special because we're going to go, we're going to do an, a, an hour and a half special for cancer. I just think it's too important to do just one hour. Mm -hmm. So we'll do an hour and a half. So I ask all of you guys to join us next week for the special segment on breast cancer. And, and men, don't feel that you shouldn't be part of this discussion because in the United States, every year, about 2,600 men are diagnosed with breast cancer. Out of these, about 584 of these individuals die. So it's an important conversation to have. So please join us next week when we discuss breast cancer. Thank you so much. Lisa, once again, I want to thank you so much. It's been a pleasure. I'm sure we're going to talk. For so, sure, Peter, for sure. Thank you so much yeah. for being such a great host. I appreciate it. My pleasure. My pleasure. Bye. Okay, bye. Bye.